they theory proved the whole world wrong, including Aki. He proved his doubters. And a lot of people thought Fury was capping, including Teddy Atlas. We thought he was bugging. We thought he was out of his mind. We thought he was playing mind games when he was saying he was going to come forward and pressure, Ty, uh, and pressure Deontay Wilder and look for the KO like he's the original Iron Mike. We took him for a joke, and he proved us wrong. Now, the funny part of all of this is the fact that um, Tyson Fury told Deontay Wilder to his face, I'm going to pressure you and knock you out. And Deontay Wilder said, speak a believer, receive it. <laughs> and at that moment, I applied to Tyson Fury. Now, first of all, um, I appreciate everybody in the chat. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to be here regardless. Of course, U.S. took a, t uh, took a loss. However, the U.K., they have a mega fight on their hand. So we're going to get to that later. For the meantime, can you sum up what you saw last night and what happened from round one to round seven till they start the fight? Yeah, so I, I I saw a bully beat down out there. Even something that I didn't even expect. Um, I'll be honest, but so I um, I'm on a different group chats with uh, people within different boxing communities, and so we, we remember from from the live broadcast, nobody within my house picked Fury. Me and my pops um, at all of the groups that we were in. We're the only people to pick Fury. Uh, well, excuse me, my my boy um, Fuji. Shout out to Fuji. Uh, you know, so he actually uh, picked Fury too, and um, and it was, it was no hate. I, I think I, I got some backlash about me hating or just kind of being a sellout. I'm a, I'm a boxing purist, and I try to be objective in any kind of. Um, Assessment or it was prediction a that I'm fight. giving. It yeah. was a 50 50 fight. Yeah, it was a 50 50 fight, but there was I there was somebody who I thought was clearly the better boxer, even though it was a 50 50 fight because yeah. of the because of the power of Wilder. But I'm talking about you saying that they were saying that you, you know, picking sides and stuff like that. Yeah, man, it's, it, like, it's, it, it's but, a 50 50 fight. Yeah, it's it a could 50 -50 go either fight. way. But like, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't mean that I'm rooting for that. But that, to your point, kind of makes their case because if it's a 50 50 fight, then it, that means that it's a toss up and that you can really choose anybody else. I just think that Fury. So I have I have a bit of an issue with Wilder as a boxer, um, and particularly, and it's something that I talk about all the time. It's to me, it's a, it's a bit cringeworthy sometimes to watch him fight. And um, so hold on, but like let me get to this to this point real quick. So um, I said uh, so. This is when when they were asking about uh, the conclusion. Some people didn't see it. Uh, and I said, as a black man, I take no pleasure in seeing Wilder stop. But as a boxing purist, his loss seemed appropriate. Right. So me, that was saying that it's that for me as a boxing purist, there is a sweet science. Right. So Deontay Wilder famously kind of quoted like the sweet sign is a myth. And I do not believe that. But to me, what I saw last night was the sweet science kind of winning out. You had Tyson Fury, who was somebody who was essentially born to be a fighter. He was named after Mike Tyson. He comes from a family of boxers. He's been fighting since he was in grade school. And then you have Wilder, which kind of epitomizes uh, U.S. heavyweight boxing at this time. All right? So he was a late entry, somebody who actually had aspirations to be a football player. So he didn't walk into a gym until he was 19 years old. And because of that, you can tell. Um, I was telling Aki that when... Um, when he throws his right hand, sometimes it's almost like he's either winding up to he throw like a yeah to like throw a baseball pitch or to throw uh, um, to throw to a wide receiver because he kind of keeps his hands here and then when he's getting ready to throw, he almost kind of like you know literally cocks his head yeah. and throws. So he telegraphs it a lot. It's a super long, so sometimes you can't get out the way. And Wilder, ha I mean Fury has the advantage that he's six nine. And Wilder's not going to fight too many people like that, so he can actually get out of the way of some of those long right hands. Even though Wilder did catch him a couple of times, I thought Fury took those punches well. But I thought it was a very dominant performance by uh, Fury. Um, Wilder, he did bulk up. And they were saying, and we'll, we'll get to that later, about some issues about a um, about some leg, previous leg issues. But... Um, well, he, he looked like, you know, those those kind of buildings that are not um, kind of symmetrical in their architecture. So they're real heavy at the top. 
and they, they just kind of like sway with the wind. So to me, that's how Wilder was looking like, well, like after know, the, we, since the second we, round. We know why. I don't think it was uh, in the second to, to round. Me, after he, the third did. round when he got busted in the eardrum and his ear was bleeding. After the third round, it was all over. He was fighting off will and heart. Deontay mm -hmm. Wilder was not fighting off skill or the chance that he got what, one hit or quitter. He was fighting off will and heart. After oh. the third round, after getting busted in the air drum, because his ear was literally bleeding. And I'm not talking about his ear was bleeding from Tyson Fury singing after the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Tyson Fury. He talked about before the fight that he's going to come in and fight like the Iron Mike, like the original Iron Mike. And a lot of people, including me, thought he was bluffing. I asked you last show. You think he's going to come forward. You said, nah, he's going to box to a decision. You did not see him come forward. You thought he was yeah. playing mind games. So that's what the whole world was thinking. Tyson Fury proved everybody wrong. And he came forward and knocked out and bullied the bullier, Deontay Wilder. That's credit to Tyson Fury for actually um, going to the fire, you know, with gasoline. But he didn't care. He had that type of confidence. So even though Wilder was really confident, however... Whatever Wilder was preaching, as far as speak it, believe it, or receive it, Tyson Fury did it, and this time he was better prepared. Tyson Fury made adjustments. Deontay Wilder did not make adjustments. He was relying on that one right hand to take out Tyson Fury. And um, I think he shocked Deontay Wilder when he came forward. I think um, Tyson Fury, I mean, I think Deontay Wilder really thought Tyson Fury was playing mind games and he was going to move around the ring all night. And I'm pretty sure the whole training camp, he focused on cutting off the ring. I don't think he actually was looking at Tyson Fury thinking, oh, yeah, he's coming toward me. He was thinking that he was going to move around the ring and do exactly the same thing he did the first time. But Tyson Fury... He said that um, last time he did that and he had a draw and he's not cool with a draw. That's an L to him. Mm -hmm. And credit to Tyson Fury, he came forward and got the KO when people thought he was pillow fisted. So like I said, Tyson Fury gets all the credit in the world because he fought like he was Andre Ward last night. I remember when Andre Ward fought Frotch, he was coming forward being the counter puncher. Usually the counter puncher likes to fight in range, box around, move around and walk you to shots. Andre Ward, when he fought Frouch and a lot of his opponents, he was coming forward, applying pressure while countering you, which is very difficult to do. As soon as Tyson Fury did it to Deontay Wilder and started backing him up, I, I believe Deontay Wilder, he didn't fold under pressure. He always had the will to win, but it threw him off so much that instead of him throwing some sharp right hands, he started telegraphing it. And that was the point you were talking about early on. He was like... Here we go. A right hand is coming. And Fury, he too slick for that. You know what I mean? And Wilder, he made the um, ultimate mistake of, um, you know, pulling back like he was Ali, but he don't have the reflexes of Ali and, the uh, you know, the, 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 the float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. He could sting like a bee, but he couldn't float like, float like a butterfly because, see, when you fight in a stavern and you, you fight off the back foot, you could... Uh, keep your hands down and you won't get paid for it because he's shorter than you. So as long as you control range with your jab, you could keep him on the outside. But when you fight a Tyson Fury that's taller than you and have more reach, if you're backing up, making mistakes, keeping your hands down, you're going to get caught with a right hand or two. You know, And that's exactly what happened to Deontay Wilder. Now, seeing what you saw last night, that one hit a quitter, what you know, he caught Tyson Fury here, here and there. Like I believe in the second round, I gave it to Deontay Wilder. He caught Tyson Fury like with three good right hands. Is mm -hmm. it? It's credit to Tyson Fury. He took the punch, but I believe Wilder. He telegraphed it when he threw them, and also he threw it while he was out of reach. So he was reaching when he landed it. Now, um, is is that the reason why Tyson Fury took the punch, or is it the fact that he saw the punch coming and all of the above? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, he does have a one-hitter quitter, but it's usually the punch that hurts you the most is the one that you don't see. So if you're not, um, if you're not blinding them with a, either with a kind of a hook right hand or a jab right hand or a quick counter like he did against Ortiz when, you know, when, when Ortiz was kind of coming on the attack, 
then that gives a person opportunity to um, kind of turn from the punch to, or what they say, roll with the punch to uh, basically de- deflect some of its power. Uh, a couple of things that I, I want to say is that, so one is that, you know, still that's all that we talk about, but what is that? Um, it was just that, like, just, what about that right hand? And and it just, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it uh, uh, epitomizes water of being this one trick pony. Cause a couple of things about the fight. One is that I saw, even though I thought I give Wilder credit, he did, he was a little kind of like frazzled when uh, Fury kind of came out on that front foot. But he it stayed threw composed. Him off, though. Threw yeah, him but he off. stayed composed because Ortiz did the same thing. Ortiz was on the front foot. He was like, I'm a, and like Fury took some of those notes from there. It was like, this guy had a lot, a lot of success. So, but I thought he stayed composed. And like you said yourself, he came out, you, you gave him the second round. Yeah. Um, but with that said, I also saw somebody who looked lost at times, didn't know what we was doing, and made no adjustments, no advice from the corner <laughs> to do adjust, anything, yeah. no kind of nothing from there. And I just think that they're just a little ill-prepared. And while there's still somebody from me who I have not seen any kind of exponential growth from when he first started to where he is now. But that right hand, like you said, has got him to this point. Another thing is that I think one of the most important overlooked aspects is those T-shirts those guys were wearing in Fury's Corner. It said Crunk Jim. If anybody knows about Crunk Jim, that's the home of legendary Emmanuel Stewart, who um, took two heavyweights who had similar size and dimensions as a Fury and kind of transforming. And then they were basically the most dominant heavyweights of the era. So I'm talking about Vladimir Klitschko and Lennox Lewis. And if you look at some of the tactics that Fury was using, he was leaning on his opponent. He was making sure he was, you know, he, he didn't do that in the first, he didn't in, in the first, and he was really working behind that jab and he was landing like his, his right hand was the most impactful punch of the fight, even though he he showed a lot of different weapons, the uppercuts, the hook, uh, the, hook the lead hook that he was coming in with. But um, I think that you could really see that um, crunk boxing gym philosophy come through. And I think that's something that people haven't get a lot of attention to. But I give Fury credit. Like, I, I he, think he, he knew Fury exactly. pulled it off. I mean, the corner, he, he did, the corner but he, cool. But, but, but he, he knew exactly. Because, listen, Fury was the one. Who picked that. fired? Yeah, he picked them. He yeah. fired his his longtime um, coach or trainer and yeah. picked them. So yeah, yeah, Fury gets all the credit um, in, in 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 the world, but at the same time, he he knew what he was doing. He picked the right team, and then they delivered with outstanding results. Yeah, it ain't, it don't get better than this. He 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 basically preached. I mean, he did everything he preached. So. Um, you know, we could say he was clowning this and that. Now everything he was saying, you know, he he it, it, it was like he was a prophet almost. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, Deontay Wilder, he gets a lot of credits for you know he wanted to go out on his shield. However, his corner did the right thing by throwing the towel. Yeah. Because you know you could live on to fight another day. It was in his night. I don't think he was prepared the right way. I don't think he thought Tyson Fury was going to actually come forward, which that's his mistake. You know, he sh- Tyson Fury really told him. He literally told him what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. He told him I was going to come forward. And Deontay Wilder, he thought he was capping. And fight night, Wilder really got thrown off. And that's why I felt like he telegraphed a lot of that right hands. You're saying he never made adjustments, and he really didn't. Even in the inside... He was trying to still land that right hand, the sh- you know. But the problem with that is, with them heavyweights, super heavyweights, almost, it's hard to land a, a straight right in the inside. You got to rely on hooks, uppercuts, which Wilder was trying to throw. However, he don't he didn't have the really? leverage for it. All and that technique. Nor, but more so the legs. He was out on his feet. I felt like after round three, after he busted his eardrum, he was out on his feet. Now. If there is a third match, and Wilder does, you know, wants the third fight right away, there's a rematch clause, so he could make it happen. Can he do what Anthony Joshua did against Ruiz? Because remember, 
Everybody thought Anthony Joshua, it was all over for him. Remember after the third round, he got hit in the equilibrium and he could never recover. He was wobbly the whole night. Deontay Wilder, his ear was literally bleeding and Tyson Fury tried to lick it at one point, you know, and he said he wanted to taste blood. some of his blood and he literally almost did during the fight. So what I'm saying, can Wilder rewrite the, the wrongs? I know it's a minor step back for a major comeback. However... Should he do it this early without uh, making adjustments or uh, improvements to his game? Your opinion on that? Can he do what AJ did against Ruiz? I, I mean, a lot of people had Deontay Wilder. Um, you know, they were they were picking Deontay Wilder because of the obvious fact of his uh, one hit, one hit or quitter. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody knew Tyson Fury had better skill, but um, you know, Tyson Fury shocked the world. Uh, with that being said, I have my man, I think Jules of Life, on the phone. Uh, how you doing, Aki? Who this oh, I'm is? Doing great, but how are you today? Oh yeah, I got yeah, it Jules accurate. Oh, okay, okay. Jules good, for Life. Bro. How you doing, Aki? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How are you guys tonight? Oh, we doing great. I'm feeling real good. Hey, right I'm now. hurt. Yeah, my man took I'm an L. You already know right that, now. you know. But it's all right. I feel like the champ could bounce back. Mine is set back for a major comeback. Yeah, I, I told the same. But yeah. here's the thing, man, about about last night. I I noticed how fake the the a lot of these Wilder fan bases are, and also not only the Wilder fan base, the Fury and the AJ fan base. Because if you rewind it back three weeks ago, all of the all of the the England fans were quiet. But then now that Tyson Fury has the championship, and um, Anthony Joshua has it. Now they're, they're back to talking trash again. But the same thing happened in <laughs> June. They when he lost it to Andy DeRees, <laughs> they were quiet. They didn't say nothing. But now that all of the championships are over there in Europe, they're having a field day because they're not used to having the bills. They're used As to they should. They stand on American soil. Hey, listen, <laughs> look. The USA, we went and took so many Ws. Man, it's okay. We took an L today, but it's all right. You know what I mean? Things happen, but they act like, you know, this never took place. That's what we saying, Professor Nam. Like, man, we done took so many Ws, we didn't brag about it. Well, you know what, what I mean? What, what I'm saying is that all of the heavyweight belts are across the pond. And, like, yeah, if I was if I was English, uh, British, uh, whatever, or uh, from the UK, I'd be exulting in this <laughs> in this win or this state well, of boxing right well, now. Well, Jules of Life saying they weren't here before the fight. I mean, we didn't even have one Tyson Fury uh, guy picking, pick, you know, I mean, a fan picking him or anything like that. Of course, yeah. uh, beside a personality on the show, I'm talking about a fan calling. We that never had true. anybody nobody. calling in pick Tyson Fury. So I don't want to hear nobody calling in talking about how they knew Fury was coming forward uh, to knock out Deontay Wilder. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, Jews of Life, right. you know, you can continue. So, here's what I'm saying, man. As far as the outfit Wilder goes, and I've, I've been said this, I already said that Fury was the better boxer. I, I said from the gate, from the get go, that Wilder, he would have had to land one of those punches. And he did. He landed quite a few of those punches last night. I count like five off, just off the top of my head without counting them um, consecutively. But anyways, man, what Deontay Wilder did wrong last night, he didn't throw he didn't throw combinations. He he's too used to <laughs> yeah, being that for Oh yeah, because yeah. because he's such a good combination thrower. Yeah, well, Wilder is a one punch. You know, he he just throws he don't throw one punch. Yeah, he just throw one punch. Yeah, he sing, he a single puncher, so, but sometimes he would throw one. You know, one two or two one, but or two three. Which is a right hand and a left hook, but uh, you know he really not a combination puncher. He just needed yeah, to be in range to throw his right, but he just never found yeah, his range. Yeah, so credit to Tyson Fury. Here, here's the thing, though: how long can you can you survive being a boxer with their, with that fighting style that he has? Mm. The next mm. thing that was wrong with him. Wait, oh, I'm, I'm going to tell you how long. Answer that. But, uh, uh, go ahead, Juza. Like, I, want, I, want, I want to hear what Aki has to say about that. <laughs> now, hold on. <laughs> first of all, first of all, he survived till now. Uh, he have 10 title defenses. Did, and man. also, let's not forget, not everybody is a Tyson Fury. Now, name me a fighter with yeah. Tyson Fury defense. I think the only person that could beat a Deontay Wilder is a Tyson Fury. I still think Deontay Wilder, if he could get his confidence back, 
to the top. I think he could still sleep AJ because of the fact that uh, AJ is not as mobile and he's a little stiff. Mm -hmm. And if Wilder cracks him one time, that's all she wrote. So you have to I be a Tyson you, Fury to pull it off. But at the same time, I do understand he should have been improving his skill level as far as pivot, as far Wait. because Wilder came out saying that he don't uh, the sweet science is a myth. You know, you shouldn't be saying anything like that. You should be learning and, and adding adding tools to your um to your uh, game. But I appreciate you for calling in, Jules. I was life. gonna say this last thing. But yeah, go this ahead. Last thing. Go ahead. The last thing I was gonna say is this, man. Um, his combinations, his, he needs to work on his speed, his footwork, his defense. And, um, yeah, man, if, if he does that, he'll be good. And his punch, his play, his punching placement. Um, okay. I, I appreciate yes, you for, appreciate for calling me. You have a good night. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. So like with, so Jews of life is saying that if he just turns into a whole new fighter, a whole different fighter. But, but it's, so he it's, said work see, on his defense, is, <laughs> his combination, his footwork, <laughs> his accuracy. But see, you're giving my man a hard time. No, but I'm just saying. It's hard to teach your old dog new tricks. That's for sure. I know, you know that. Man, no, I'm over here trying to teach him to stay out of this, the, the <laughs> podcast. He won't listen for a damn. You know what I mean? So it's But um, how you doing, Aki? Who this is? Where you calling from? Uh, this is Big, this big Joe from Phoenix. Uh, how you uh, the say it again? This this Big Joe from Phoenix. Big Joe, how you doing, Big Joe? What's going on, Arizona said, in the I'm house? Said, I, I, I called y'all. I called y'all last week. I talked okay. talk about Charlo and the Canelo stuff. But yeah, I wanted to I wanted to get into this Fury thing, man. Uh, kind of kind of want to go over what old boy was just talking about too, about how these fans came out of nowhere on on all the all the uh, all the YouTube sites. But um, you know. When it comes down to it, I think we all knew that that you know Wilder doesn't. He, he he's he's not a boxer. He's he's actually pretty new to boxing. To be, to be honest with you. Yeah, he is. Um, he, he he you know we all know he has that one shot that 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 that's very hard. But he he got cracked, and I watched the whole strategy play part, man. I I, I seen Fury uh, uh, laying on him the whole fight. Yeah, draining his butt out. Yeah, yeah headlocking him, headlocking him, laying on him, laying on him, headlocking him, headlocking him. That was, was super intentional. Him, put him yeah. on the ropes. And, and he, he, he knew what he was doing. That was, that was some great strategy. I mean, that was a, that right I mean, that was a game plan. Strategy. Yeah, that was right. a game plan. He, he saw somebody about come it. in there with a he game plan, about and he executed it. I, I just didn't see that from Wilder. I didn't yeah. see a game, come, a game plan. Wilder? It was, yeah, no. it was like, I, I got I this right it. hand. Yeah, it's like what, what, what's your game plan? I got I got this right hand. Well, Deontay Wilder was right. relying on that, but it was Tyson Fury that threw him off. <laughs> he didn't expect him coming forward. I think that threw off Wilder so much that he couldn't adjust at real t at real time during the mm -hmm. moment. But yeah, it finish did. your point. I it keep. Did. And it will, and, and it will, that, and that's the point because, uh, like you guys saying, Wilder really didn't have a game plan. Man. He thought he was going to shoot that shot like he did last time, where he waited and waited. Shot it on Ortiz and it was lights out by the ninth round. That that shit don't work no more. You got you got a guy who knew his game plan. His game plan was I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lie the whole time. I'm actually gonna come in at 273. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use my weight on your ass. I'm gonna get trained by a brother from the United States, Stewart, and I learn how I learn how to throw some better combos. And that's what he did. And once he cracked him, let's be honest too. I'm I'm, I'm not giving no wilder no excuses. But when he got cracked, he got cracked in the heat room just like when Ruiz. Crack AJ and that yeah. room, and, and you seen his eyes, man, and the way he was wobbling, and yeah. he did that the whole rest of the round. He he was off. <laughs> he could he could he could not throw nothing, man. And, yeah, he was out on his I, feet, I really man. He was fighting off pure instinct the whole night, really. That's true. You he know, was. he was fighting. He was. He was fighting on pure heart. But I have but a caller. Uh, a lot good. of people calling in. Appreciate you, I keep like, calling next show. Yeah, like let me ask you just one one real question. So, who do you think the face of boxing is right now? Honestly, I mean, I hate to say it, but it, 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 right now it, it would probably be, well, actually, I would say Canelo at one point. Uh oh, oh. At one point. After he on the show uh -huh. and, and came, in with his, came with his king suit on and everything and, and, and dominated <laughs> the, the top heavyweight, I'm going to say Fury. Okay then, man. And, I, and, I appreciate the love, bro. And you got to keep in mind, Fury have a, a AJ fight on the horizon. Name yeah, yeah. me a fight for Canelo I mean, that's, that's I, bigger I just, than the AJ fight. I just, I just want to hear as opinion. we speak. Yeah, uh, who did? I appreciate everybody for tuning in. 
Uh, click on the like button, support, and subscribe below if you're trying to get smart about a minute. If you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these decaf, aka dumbass casual fans, slash O Media. Shout out to DBN for starting the new media wave. Attend the IQ Universe, I mean, attend Split Decision every Sunday live. If you want to graduate and be a hardcore, like I said, all y'all casual fans that have been requesting the show, we got it for y'all. So it's a boxing debate slash talk show. To attend our IQ University, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post or go live on Split Decision. With that being said, um, Professor Nam.